Hey guys, welcome back to Frosty Gaming. So, I get the question all the time whenever I put out a, um, whatever you call it, like a gaming setup video, or if I put out a build, build log video for you guys, I get the question all the time, will this run such and such game? Um, most of the time when I put out build guides, if it's a $500 build guide, uh, by the way, this is just kind of like a channel vlog for you guys. If I put out like a build guide for like a $500 gaming PC, obviously it's not going to run the latest games at say like 40 plus frames per second or something like that. It it, most of it depends on a key component in, in the system. Um, other times when I put out like a thousand dollar gaming build, obviously those are a little bit more high end and they're going to perform a lot better. And I try to pair up a really good CPU with a really good graphics card. So you should be okay. You should be able to push 40, 50, sometimes even 60 or more frames per second, depending on the resolution that you're running. If you're running 1080p or 1440, you should be fine. If you're running, you know, 3440 by 14 or whatever that is, the ultra wides, um, or if you're running 4K, obviously you're gonna take a bit of a performance hit when you're trying to run those uh, newer games that have been coming out, um, especially at higher settings and whatnot, ultra high settings, what, whatever it may be. The biggest question that I get is, like I said, will this run certain games? Now, my best answer to that is, um, what key component in the, in the system, if you wanna upgrade just the current system that you have right now, for the new games that are coming out. And I thought about it for quite some time, actually, a few hours, actually, and, you know, just on and off when, during the day. And it's not really, it's not the RAM. The RAM does give you a little bit of a performance boost, but mostly when you're rendering and streaming and things like that. Um, also, your CPU, it, your CPU kind of matters, but most CPUs out there right now, even the stuff that you buy in Best Buy in those pre-built computers just for a desktop, they have, usually have a pretty good CPU in them. So if you want to go that route and buy one of those computers from Best Buy or Target or whatnot, if you haven't built your own, um, you're obviously going to have to upgrade your power supply a little bit if you want to upgrade this one key component that I'm going to tell you. Um, you might have to upgrade to maybe like a 500 watt or a 550 or something like that if, it, if your PC or your desktop doesn't already have it. Your monitors should be no more than 4K. If you don't have at least two graphics cards, you should not be gaming at 4K. Uh, two higher end graphics cards, such as 980s, 980 Ti's, um, Fury X's, Nano's, things like that. The key component that matters the most, and don't quote me on this. If you guys disagree with this, that's fine. Um, I'm always open to your guys' suggestions and comments and whatnot in the comments down below. I read almost every one of your guys' comments. Uh, the key component that matters the most is your graphics card. So to run most of these newer games and whatnot nowadays, you need to run at least four gigabytes of VRAM or higher. I have two 980 Ti's that have six gigabytes of VRAM each. Obviously, I can run at 4K, triple monitors, ultra rides, whatever I want to do, whatever my mind can come up with and imagine, and whatever I put together, it'll be fine. Now, if you have a baseline PC, such as an i3 or an i5 or an i7-4690 or an i5-4660 or whatever that is, whatever I put in my last $1,000 build, obviously, your, your CPU isn't gonna matter too much because CPUs have always been built far ahead of GPU capability. So they're even coming out with CPUs now that have GPU capability built into them alongside with CPU capability all in one chip that can reach what older graphics cards, say like a 690 or a 580 and things like that, uh, GTX 580s, 690s, in a small little chip along with the CPU. So I say again, your CPU isn't really the problem. It's actually your graphics card. If you guys wanna upgrade your graphics cards, um, my 980 Ti's, my For the Win editions that I have right now, they're always linked in my descriptions below. So if you guys wanna check those out, use that link and shop around to a uh, different graphics card, whatever you wanna use. If you want to stay ahead of the game, and kind of future-proof yourself a little bit for all the new games that come out if you guys play on PC, I would go on the AMD side 
I would go with an R9 280X or 290X or higher. Now that also includes an R9 370, 380, 390, Fury, whatever, Nanos, whatever you want. Now, when you, if you want to go over the GTX side, the NVIDIA side of things, I would recommend like a 780, a 780 Ti, a 970, 980, 980 Ti, whatever you want to do there. Just make sure that they are at least four gigabytes of VRAM or higher. So like I said before, the most important component in your computers for running these latest games that have been coming out is going to be your graphics card. If your CPU, you think it's not powerful enough, if it's an overclockable CPU, just look it up on the internet. Um, I'm sure it's, everything's readily available on Google and whatnot. So just type it into Google, see if your CPU, just put it in the search bar, is it overclockable and how to overclock it. Um, a lot of a lot of computers, uh, uh, programs like AI Suite and things like that, if you have an ASUS motherboard, which are which is very common, I have an ASUS motherboard, it comes with AI Suite 3, a lot of the newer ones do. And then you can do intelligent processor overclocking and whatnot, so you can actually go in there and it'll over, overclock it for you. If you guys haven't seen my overclock, how to overclock your CPU the funny way, I actually ended up getting like, what was it? Instead of like 4.6 or 4.7, I, I actually reached 4.8 gigahertz on my uh, CPU, my i7-6700K Skylake. I actually reached 4.8, and then when I did that fan thing, it actually reached 4.9, almost 5 gigahertz. I don't know why that happened. That fan on full blast just blown all that cool air in there. I don't know. It just helped with the temperatures because it'll keep doing the overclocks until your temperatures reach a certain point, and then it'll just quit it. So I have my fans running all the time, obviously. Um, when you're overclocking, make sure your fans are running completely full blast, full speed at all times. That way you can achieve a little bit better overclock. And then when you're running overclocked, especially when you're gaming, make sure you have better uh, cooling, whether it be an all-in-one cooler, which I have also have linked in my descriptions below. You can go with any one you want. Just click on that link and search whatever you want. Um, I think that link has like 10 different options available for the cooler that I have. I have the H60, you can do the H55, the H55 Quiet, the H80, whatever you want. It's all Corsair. Um, what else do I want to say? So, like I said, the, the most important component in your tower, in your system, in your laptop, whatnot, is your graphics card. That is the most popular piece of equipment that you have at, in your arsenal to handle these higher end games. So. If you guys don't agree, or if you agree, make sure you hit the like button on that video. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button. You don't want to miss out on anything in the future. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Stay frosty.